giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. All right, good evening all, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Infimidation. With nothing to recap this week, we're looking forward to the 2019 Destination Deep Space season in Michigan and previewing some of the week one action we have coming up. Uh, we're going to talk some predictions, to give some hot takes for the season as a whole. Reporting for first updates now, I'm PJ Lewalski. I'm Nick Cousins. I'm Sky League. And I'm Nick Mathis. All right, before we get started, we're excited to have some new faces on Infimidation this year. You're going to meet some of them next week, but we got a couple here this week. Uh, so tonight, let's meet two of our new lovely contributors. So, Sky, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Sky Leak. I come from the new inaugurated Fun Upper or First Upper Midwest or FUM. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, a host on Southern Fried last year, and uh, now I'm in Michigan. Thanks, Guy. Yeah, I'm Nick. Um, I am uh, an alumni of Team 4130. I was the uh, team captain last year, uh, part of the world finalist team, and then I'm uh, transferring to Kettering University in the fall. So just kind of a little bit about me, I guess. <laughs> All right. We're super excited to have Sky and Nick over here with us this year. Uh, before we dive into the nitty gritty, uh, what I want to get, since this is our first show of the season, what are all of your reactions to Destination Deep Space now that we've gone through build season and had some time to digest this game? Uh, uh, we're going to go with OG Nick. I know you have some opinions. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm really worried about defense this year. I think defense is going to make this game uh, generally not a great game to watch, at least in qualification matches, um, because there's so many points where... Just, I mean, you can only have one robot play defense at a time. So obviously they were trying to mitigate that some um, with that rule. But all it takes is one one robot parking themselves, you know, in front of the rocket ship that the other alliance is trying to get their RP on, and they shut everything down completely. They can block an entire loading station. At least in 2017, you were kind of protected once you got to the loading zone. This year, it's like all bets are off, until, at least until the end of the match. Um, so I think there's just a lot of places where you know, in a very specific spot, defense can just shut things down very quickly. And I'm, I feel like it might be uh, as bad as, as qualification matches to watch as 2015 was. Uh, yeah, at first I kind of got that, that feeling that defense could definitely hinder this game being, you know, easily watchable and fun to watch. Uh, and I, I did dislike it for that, that reason. Um, but I also disliked it for uh, just having another year of tall... Uh, pick and place game, uh, and this is just you know doubling down. But uh, I've since come around a little bit, and I'm thinking that's really going to actually help the average team. Uh, everybody's still coming into this year fresh with uh, the kind of the the top designs or things that work, things that didn't work, uh, and that's all gone into their machines. And I think it's actually going to, uh, if the defense doesn't kill it, uh, make this game much more competitive and fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, I guess I had a little bit of an issue. Um, I, to be honest with you, I hated the game at first. I saw it on kickoff day and disliked it extremely. Um, but I had a, I had a feeling like you know, kind of what Sky said, how like with the tall games and stuff, or with the tall robots and stuff, uh, that a lot of teams were just gonna you know take an elevator from last year or a four bar, you know, kind of slap it on that, uh, you know, their robot this year. And um, I think by seeing some of the reveal videos that teams have already listed, that a lot of teams went totally outside the box. And uh, kind of took it to themselves that, you know, said, hey, we don't want to really do what we had last year and let's kind of go out of the box and do something different. So I thought that was kind of neat. Well, I guess I'm going to be the lone dissenter, although I guess I guess Sky and uh, Nick Jr. over there are generally positive now. Uh, but start bad. I've 
sort of liked the game the whole way through. Um, I am ten- I always I always go to every year tentatively optimistic when I see the game. Uh, I do share the concerns about defense uh, for sure, especially because uh, from a referee perspective, there's very few fouls or protected zones or penalties involving defense. Yeah, I was I was going to say the the ref part of PJ probably loves this game. <laughs> There's yeah, it's it seems, but yeah, but it's <laughs> so that's why it's it's good from a refing perspective, but bad in that there's more room for defense to cause problems and hit people around because there's no safe zones other than your own uh, hab zone in the last twenty seconds. They can't touch the rocket, but that's right. twenty seconds. Um, so we'll see. We got some events this week to, to check out, see if we can find anything, uh, see how much defense ruins Nick's, uh, week one debut. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, I guess we'll find out, but <laughs> we'll find out at Southfield. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of teams who aren't ready to play the normal game with their robot. And so they're going to have nothing to do, but kind of drive around, which means they will play defense because what else is there to do? And, uh, so, yeah, I have a feeling that there's going to be quite a lot going on. So it'll be interesting to see how many Rocket RPs happen across the board in the first week. I have a feeling it will not be many at all. So, yeah, so. I'm going to disagree with you on that a little bit, yeah. but we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's a preview for what's to come. All right. So now that we've got some reactions, we have a sort of pre Every week we do our top 10 robots uh, from the top 25 voting. Uh, so, But this uh, for this week, since there was no voting... Uh, we sort of created, we worked together and created sort of our preseason top 10 robots. So uh, I'm going to dive right in. We should have a nice little list coming up. And we've got on top, we've obviously got 2767. I mean, they're a two-time defending world champion. What? How can they not be? We've got 27, uh, who was Strikeforce's partner last year. I've I've seen that robot. I'm really excited to see it in action. We've got Nick's bees at number three got the engineers at number uh, four um after seeing a video of how they plan to climb uh to level two i'm a little bit skeptical of uh, uh, yeet? The, their their yeet climb <laughs> i'm a little more skeptical of putting them up at number oh. four <laughs> but uh so but for now they could stay there uh i tr- i trust clint to to make that work and then uh, we got our Robo Jackets. We got the Comets. We got some Martians. Uh, numbers eight and nine are our two teams out of Lapeer, uh, who both put out fantastic reveal videos 1684, the Chimeras, and 5460 Strike Zone. Both very different robots, but both very clean. Both seem to be able to score incredibly well. Uh, 1684 has got a little bit of an edge because they have shown that they have that level three hab climb. Uh, 5460 has not shown any sort of climb. And then at number 10, we have uh, Perennial Powerhouse, number 67, uh, Hot Out of Milford. So we kind of worked on this together. Uh, there was some disagreement in, in our process of doing this. Some teams got left off. Some teams moved around. And so I guess anybody else that you're you're looking out for this year, guys, besides these 10? Well, obviously the top two. I mean, how could you? I mean, that makes no sense. Putting the world <laughs> champions as number one and two. Was so radical. Uh no, but, but I think... But I guess in opposition to that point, none of the four Michigan fi- world finalists are on this list. That's true. So oh, Actually, no, I lied. There's 3357. Yeah, yeah. Comments are... What do we have in it? At eight, I think we, we had? Uh, six. six. Oh, six. Okay. Um, well, anyway, uh, I will say... Uh, I mean, 217, I think, is a team... We had them in there in the top 10 at one point earlier today. Uh, some things got shuffled around. So, um, obviously, you know, the Thunder Chickens... Have been good for many years. I wouldn't, you know, count them out by any means yet. Uh, somebody else just said in the chat right now. I think 3707, Dirty Swerve. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I could see them being another great team this year. They they obviously had a really great breakout year last year, um, so they could keep that up. I don't know if any of you guys have any other uh, teams you have your eye on. All right. Well, Nick fixes that. Mine. I'm going to throw out is. Uh from over on the west side of the state in kind of the middle of nowhere farm country, 3452, the Green Engineers, one yep. of the quietest powerhouses out on the west side. They've been amazing since about 2015, winning multiple district events, all kinds of awards, and just nobody knows 
who they are. Nobody ever talks about the Green Engineers. So they're my... Uh, uh, well, I guess if you count the East as everybody. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> wow. I already got the East-West uh, oh, yeah. fight going. <laughs> and then... Uh, so Nick, uh, you were saying Nick Jr. You were saying something. <laughs> no. Oh. oh I think we still guy. don't have him. I don't know, Scott. Oh. Did you have any? Hey, am I here? Oh, we got oh, him. You are. Hey, here. sorry about that, guys. It just. Okay, let me turn this down here. Oh. <laughs> We've got got chat going. We're throwing out fifty-two thirty-four. Our friends over on the Marauder bots. We got four thousand three. Yeah, four thousand three. Who I slept on all of last year and never ever put them on my list, and so yeah. are we surprised that I didn't put them on again? <laughs> yeah, and they were really solid all year last year, and they just kept kept being there, kept being around, kept being one of the top teams. So, um, you know, I could easily see them continuing that into this year as well. Peter, didn't you interview them last year for behind the bumpers? I did fifty four sixty. Oh, okay. And uh, so. what did I do? I did gems. I did not do. Oh, so in other words, you left them out, is what you're saying. Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, somebody else saying 1918 in the chat. Yeah, NC Gears obviously is always you know a top contending team. So there's another one, right? I mean, there's so many. It's Michigan. There's 500. What are we at? 580 think, teams this oh, year. Oh yeah, we're 582. 582. 582. So yeah, I mean, there's obviously more than 10 really great teams in the state. Um, uh, but, by the way, it, it turns out I interviewed them. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tyler believed in them more than I did, apparently. <laughs> All right, so back to what I was going to say before my mic decided to take a dump. Um, I think that we're going to see uh, Strike Zone um, climb this list. Um, I know that they've been kind of bouncing between a few things, uh, but like uh, bouncing between, you know, are they are they at the elite level yet? Are they pushing that border? But um, they released that Voyager robot the, uh, a couple of days ago, and man, I mean, that thing is going to be, I, I mean, my opinion, I think they're going to be able to fill the rocket by themselves in a very quickly... Uh, manner so i'm excited to see what's going to come out of them so yeah and i mean to build off of that i, I think chimeras also looks really really oh, great sure. um well, like an extremely clean robot coming out from them i think the re level three climb is one of the best that the whole world has seen actually so far out of all the reveals out there um so i, I expect them to do big things as well for sure mm -hmm. um but it looks like we should probably move on to our previews for this coming week. Obviously, we don't have any recaps, but we're going to kind of look ahead to what the three events we have have going on this weekend in Michigan. Um, so first, we're going to look at uh, Gibraltar. Sky, what do you have coming up All at Gibraltar? All right, so for Gibraltar, there are some teams with some mechanical know-how filtering into Gibraltar this year. Out of the gate, we have some reveal videos that have dropped. Uh, 548 Robo Stangs come to mind. Uh, in taking the ball through the back of their robot, interestingly, and passing it partway up to their elevator, a uh, design we really haven't seen so far this year. We also have 5090 Tornadoes. They've shown off a few manipulators and had a... Uh, a reveal video drop on reveal night. Uh, and there seem to be running tracks this year, if memory serves. Uh, one bot I am interested in seeing this year is 3641, the Flying Toasters. Uh, last year, they had an over-the-top elevator, and they scored out of both sides of the machine. So we'll see if that design philosophy kind of carries on over to this year. Uh, and, of course, you can't go in, without, say, in a 1023 Bedford Express. Uh, not only do they have a solid machine every year, but they are a strong chairman's contender to boot. Uh, other notable teams that can really throw together a good bot, uh, 1701, 1718, 3536. Uh, but also, we've got a bit of a chairman's uh, fight going on here. Uh, and there's defending state's winner 3641, yeah, 3641 running head-to-head -head with 1023, last year's winner at Gibraltar. Uh, 1718 may be looking to take a stab at that as well. Uh, so, is. Nick... Uh, anything happening at Southfield? Uh, there will definitely be things happening at Southfield. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting event this year. Uh, 13 out of the f total 40 teams have won an event ever, um, which uh, surprised me. Um, and then o only five teams out of all 40 uh, won an event last year. Uh, that would be 33, uh, 35, 38, uh, 54, 67, 61, 17, and 72, 18. Um, so only 33 and 35, 38 won as a captain or first pick last year. They actually won Southfield together last year during week one. Um, so I think maybe both of those teams might be uh, looking to see if they can maybe pair up and do a repeat this year. Um, the event overall, depth-wise, uh, 12 out of the 40 teams went to Michigan State last year. Six out of 40 went to Worlds. That's actually about you know right on 
kind of where you know an event should be relative to how many teams are advancing to states and worlds. Um, but definitely, I would expect, like I said, 33 Killer Bees and 35, 38 the Robo Jackets, both from Auburn Hills, uh, to have a good showing. Uh, 573 the Mech Warriors and 2834 Hall of Fame Bionic Blackhawks, uh, both from Bloomfield Hills as well. I expect them to do well. Um, and then maybe like a dark pick choice, I would have uh, 5436 the Cybercats from Rochester. Uh, I could see them kind of popping up and being a team that uh, could surprise everybody. But overall, um, there's definitely a lot of. Um, you know, experience versus new new blood or teams that really haven't made it all the way yet. So it'll be interesting to see if it's more of the same or if we get some new teams up in there. Uh, as far as chairmans goes, um, not a lot of chairmans history going into the event. Obviously, if you're setting aside Hall of Fame team, 2834, they won last year at the World Championship, so they will obviously not be winning chairmans this year at Southfield. Uh, so there's really only four teams who have won any chairmans award ever at this event. Uh, two of them haven't won it in over six years. So I have a feeling this is going to end up being between uh, team 33 and uh, team 4377. Uh, I expect probably one of those two teams to walk away with chairmans. Uh, moving on to our third event, uh, Kettering one, and this is going to be our featured event of the week. So uh, Nick, what do you have for that event? Yeah. Uh, so hopping on to the going on to over to uh, Kettering university for the featured event next week here on fun. Uh, we have a fun one brewing that it looks like at the Kettering University event, or the first Kettering University event of 2019. Uh, some of the notable teams that are uh, looking to make this event a fun one, obviously we have one of uh, the uh, Detroit Einstein's teams and also the world champion uh, 27 Rush out of Clarkston. Uh, we also have team 245 Adam Bots, uh, who are homes of, or who is home of three blue banners last year and a Kling Bling at Kettering. Um, and then we also have another few notables. Uh, looks like 1506 Metal Muscle out of Flint. Team 3535 Galactic Invaders, who were a finalist at MSC last year out of Lapeer County. Team 3544, 3542 Speed out of Temperance. And Team 5114 Titanium Tigers out of Fenton. Um, an underdog that I'm looking here at Kettering 1, uh, I'm going to go with 5150 Hybrid Hornets. Uh, they were a captain of their alliance in 2016 when they almost walked away with uh, the MSC trophy, uh, but came in a short second, and has followed by two more consecutive MSC appearances in uh, 17 and 18. Um, one other dark horse for this competition would definitely be 52-34, the uh, Marauder Bots out of Ovidelsi. Uh They placed top five in their two districts last year and got a trip to the championship. Uh, last year's machine was powder-coated and mechanically sound robot. Uh, definitely looking for good things to come out of them from this year. Um, for the chairman's award, it's uh, not looking very deep, and my prediction would be that 254 Adam Bots is going to walk out from Rochester Hills. 245. <laughs> 245, I'm sorry. I haven't written 245. 245, not 254. That'd be pretty amazing if uh, the police are that good that they <laughs> can win the chairman's. Yeah, 245 <laughs> Adam Bots out of Rochester. All right. Uh. So now to, to sort of wrap up our final thing here. I want everyone's boldest prediction for this year, your hottest take, your spiciest thought on what you think is going to happen this year in Michigan. So what mine, I have two real fast. One, uh, my first one, one of the longest active chairman streaks in Michigan, uh, either 2604, who's on a streak of five, or 3641, who's on a streak of four, 3618 is also on a streak of four. One of those streaks will end this year. Uh, one of those teams will not win chairman's at a district award. And my second prediction is one of the original 12 robots that have made every Michigan State Championship since 2009 will miss it this year. That's pretty so. bold. That's a pretty bold thing. I, so I don't even, I can't even think off the top of my head who those 12 teams are. I mean, I can think of some. Do you have a, any particular idea on who you think it maybe could be? Um, as, as much as I hate to say it because they're really nice people, I think 573 might miss this year. Wow. If we want to, if we want to get spicy with a name, What's, uh, say that again, PJ. I said as much as they're nice people, and as much as I love them, I think if I want a specific team, I think five seventy three misses this year. Wow, that that's crazy because I, I mean, I like like I mentioned them. They're obviously at Southfield this weekend, and I had them as one of the you know the top teams to right, be yeah, competing at that event for sure. Yeah. So yeah, that that's why that's, it's spicy. That is pretty spicy. spicy. Um, I don't know if this is that spicy, but uh, it's what I got. I would say I think that. We will have at least two Michigan teams on the World Championship Alliance again this year, uh, if not more. But I so think I think, I think you'll have more. But 
Yeah, and I don't know, maybe it's not spicy, but, you know, the numbers say what, that Michigan has a quarter of all the teams at Worlds. So statistics right, yep. say that we should have one out of four on the championship lines. I think we at least double that. I think it's at least two like it was last year. You know, we had six out of eight in the Einstein finals <laughs> last year. Right? Yeah, four, I mean... four on one alliance, two on the other. So I think it's got to be at least two on the championship. And I would guess at least four out of eight in the whole thing as far as the finals alliance as well. So, All right. All right, I'm going to jump to gameplay a little bit. And like I said earlier, uh, last year was really a kind of a trial run for this year for a lot of teams. Uh, now that everybody's kind of on the same same page of what works as far as efficiency and in a kind of a tall pick-and-place game, uh, we're going to see Rocket ranking points more often than you might think uh, in in week one. I think we're going to see it maybe up to 15% of the time at some events. Whoa. Um, before people figure out... No, this is why. This is why. <laughs> before people figure out how to completely destroy the game with defense, there are going to be some teams that just get the rocket every single freaking qual match. Uh, and then if you have two teams in an event, there's 15% of the, the, the qual matches. So, um, there you go. Um, and then there's just there's just so many hab three climbers that that's yep. not enough to differentiate yourself. Uh, people are going to need to they're going to be forced to try for that that rocket. Um, so that's my week one. We're going to be seeing a lot of rocket attempts at the very least. Yeah, to kind of bounce off of Sky, uh, I'm also going with gameplay. Um, one thing that I think is that, uh, but like Sky said, uh, with the rocket, the the rank points are going to come, and then obviously before defense is going to destroy the game. I think that um, a lot of rookie teams are going to be picked up as third robots uh, in eliminations more than any other um, team, obviously, because some of the some of the newest teams to FRC can play the best defense. Uh, an example: is 6086 Ignition Ignition uh, in the MSC Finals in 2016. I mean, they came out of nowhere and. Played some of the greatest defense any of us have seen all year. So I think that, that'll that be an interesting thing to see. All right. Just to bounce back to what Sky said real quick, if we want to make this real spicy, Sky, I'll, I'll make you a bet right now that it'll be under 15% on that ranking point. You want to make what? that bet? Uh, not, re- not on all matches. We need to figure out on how I'll, many I'll make matches. It, I'll make we'll... it 10. I'll make it below 10%. That's how confident I am and it won't happen. 10% what? how many events? What if he gets to pick the event? All, all of the fins. 10% in events. less... 10% all the fi- quals matches Michigan week one. Yeah. That I could just pick all of them? Yeah. Every also, like I'm saying, out of, out of all of the qualification matches at week one in Michigan, less than 10% of those matches will have a Rocket RP from either alliance. So you're saying all three, not just the one event. Yeah. So you're saying of the... Yeah. The average of all three events from either alliance getting a ranking point. It does, you don't have to have both of them get one. As long as one of the two alliances get a ranking point, that counts. I bet you less than 10% of those matches. Yeah, Sky, I think you got the favor mm-hmm. on that one. I'd bet it. Yeah, let, let's make it, when we see each other at Worlds, uh, something from the concession stand. <laughs> I was going right. to say, like, some team swag, but all right, we'll work uh, out. Okay, we can do team we'll, swag. We'll work out. We'll, you guys could work out the uh, terms later. So, uh, Because we're going to have to stop it there and wrap the show up for tonight. Uh, Thank you to everyone who's watched, sent us questions and comments, and supported the show. Uh, If you want more First Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you have a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. Be sure to click that little green follow button above and click the purple sub button to see if you maybe have a free Twitch Prime sub available. On behalf of myself, Nick's one and two, Sky, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is a new one this year, Mouth of the South. We'll be here, same time, same place, next Monday for the recap of week one. All right. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.